We got a live ITL. That's a new thing. Um, some guy in a batter's box who you guys know. It's a crazy all in house show on This Week in Pensado's Place. Hey, everybody. Welcome to this week's show. Man, we've had a string of just great shows. Well, actually, I think all the shows are great. Uh, I'm paid to say that, but um, I learned so much from Dave Kutch. I hope, I hope you guys went back and checked that show out. We've got a unique show for you today, a, a steroid-free batter's box. We've got um, uh, an ITL that's... That, that's um, I'm a little, I'm a little prejudiced. I think it's probably going to be the best ITL we've ever done, Herb. <laughs> probably. You know what? Actually, or the worst. I don't know. Will is actually compiling a list of the things where you said it's the best we've ever done. Uh -huh. And out of 35 shows, we got to 31. Nice. <laughs> well, what would you expect? I, I nothing, believe in this nothing. show. It's, it's quality what, control. It's your quality you control. You know, it's like, it's like you and I were talking the other day. I wish I'd had this show. No question. I could have been somebody. <laughs> could have been Greg Wells, exactly. for heaven's sake. Absolutely. Man, it was, Greg was so cool, wasn't Yeah, he? people love that show. It's I, great. Uh, someone asked if there was a, a place where we could get a list of all his quotations. Mm -hmm. I'm going I'm I'm to ask Greg. Greg, if you're watching him, I'd love to have a list of your quotations. They were so inspiring. Mm -hmm. Very but cool. how was your week? Good, good, good. My week was busy. How about yours? I left the show last week and went straight to the emergency room. You did. <laughs> or was that two weeks ago? Was that, uh, it was such an emergency, we don't know when you went. I thought it was last week. I'm not sure. Is you remember drug? They drugged him. It yeah. anything. It was drugs. I got morphine. And how about today? You still after no, effects? No, today is a, is a steroid and drug-free show. Cool. Uh, Drew passed his drug test. I, you know, I thought that was a good thing. Um, it's going to be a fun show. Yeah. I, I, I tell you what, guys. Um, sometimes Herb and I feel a little guilty because we don't get all 5,000 questions in every week. And I'm not being sarcastic. I, I, we do feel guilty, so we're going to try our best to get as many questions in as we can today and make this show about you. So if you have any criticisms, write emails to yourself. This is your show this week. And, and uh, to, to, to build on to your point, one of the things that I find myself explaining a lot, which is fine, I don't mind explaining it at all, is we get lots of requests for guests. And sometimes what you guys may not know is that we have either talked to that particular person they may not have been available. Oftentimes, like this week, we have guests who fall out at the last minute for uncontrolled circumstances, unforeseen circumstances. So, so we're going after all the folks you want to, and most of them want to do it, and some of them are nervous about doing it, and some of it depends mm -hmm. on their travel schedule. So keep the request coming. Just know that we're paying attention to it. Yeah. Let's, um, right? Absolutely. Let's um, go do our usual stuff. Um, we have our homework, and you know it by now. I do not, as the teacher, need to assign it anymore, but you can, <laughs> you can see us on, uh, you can talk to us on Facebook, and you see it up on the screen. You can reach us at Facebook, obviously, as I just said. You can Twitter us. You can watch us on our YouTube channel. Uh, like us. Share with others. Subscribe. It does a lot for the show. You have no idea the power of that, and uh, we thank you for those support. We always want to mention our buddies, Viking King. Vintage King. Uh, Vi hey, I was doing a joke. And you oh, stepped on oh, 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 oh. See, man? Damn it. See, see, if I step on your thing. I, I, I'm going to catch you doing something okay, one rewind. day. I'm gonna rewind. Anyway, <laughs> of course it's Vintage King. Golly. And, uh, as a matter of fact, I think we have Drew in the... Drew Towson's in the chat room this week, right? Yeah, he drew. There's yeah. Drew up on the thing. So, Vintage King, we love you as usual. You've been great with us, and we love having you around. We're going to, we got our little giveaway we're going to do later. Ooh. Uh, ooh, and it's a very cool little thing, right? It, it actually leaves us this week or soon? Yeah. Yeah, it's our Shadow Hills Mono Optograph. Optograph, and I need to make sure I don't take it off its mark. Look at that. Look at that pretty. Oh, incredible. It God, is. Look at Vanna Townsend. <laughs> so, hey man, uh, union, you can see where to win, where to enter. You're, you you can see it right. What'd you say? It's a union shop. You're not allowed to do that. Oh, I'm sorry. As, as a union rep, I appreciate your, <laughs> oh. your focus. But, anyways, you see down below, just uh, enter right there at uh, This Week in Pro Jam. I love it. And right? uh, we're going to get back to that later. But this is such a great piece. Dave, you, you use this and you know about it. Oh, yeah. What's your yeah. sense about it? Great. Incredible. I mean, you heard Greg talk about it on the show last yeah, week. I, mean, I, I really do like it. It's um, um, 
I'm going to forego the knob joke, but it really is good. It really is incredible. <laughs> yeah, Enough with the knob okay. jokes. All right, no more knob jokes. Uh, Did you notice that, the, that this week was a, a really, really good week on Facebook? I mean, uh, I yeah. felt like... Uh, I felt like it was a, a, a nice roller coaster ride. We had we had some great comments. We had some comments um, that got me thinking about a lot of things. Some mm -hmm. comments that uh, made me feel some emotional things. Some comments that made me feel pride. I mean, um, the everybody's really taking care of everybody on the Facebook pages. Your couldn't, your page and this Pensada's place couldn't ask for more. But I, I mean, I'm learning stuff on our Facebook pages. Well. Um, we got to get to our, our ITL, but the one thing that is clearly evident is that this is an inspired, passionate, active mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. um, we are lucky to be able to be yeah. kind of the channel that it goes yeah. through in some cases. Yeah. And, and I think it's important to mention, because you and I kind of do play off of each other in this way, um, we welcome all your comments. We, we, mm -hmm. we want you to come in and we want to respond honestly. So the beauty about that, as I said, um, and maybe people saw, the passion lies right underneath the surface. And when it comes up, and we see it from you guys all the time, you're passionate about mixing, you're passionate mm -hmm. about education, you're passionate about information, and, and your passion um, and Dave's hair is partially why the show is doing so well. So I'm going to dye my hair this week. No. I'm sick of this hair. What color? Jet black. I don't know. Cut it or dye it. I'm no, tired. just dye it. But go like go radical, man. Go punk. Go Sid Vicious. Okay. Cool. I'll think about it. Why don't we go ITL? <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Here we go. And back to <laughs> you. Oh, hey, Dave. Um, okay, this week's ITL, uh, we had a um, we had a plan for you. The plan didn't quite work out. Like I told, like Herb said earlier, we. Um, I'm over explaining, I know her, but we, we, we pre film the ITL so that Will can edit them and make them real compact. And when we try to bring you guests that are working, guests that are at the top of their profession, sometimes, I guess this is the second or third time we've had a problem with yeah. somebody just not being able to make it. So, what I thought was, how can I make it interesting? And one of the uh, questions I get a lot, Herb gets it too, um, why don't my mixes sound like what I hear on the radio. Why don't my mixes sound like Manny or Jason or or Eric or Joe or whoever? And so I thought I would kind of give you some things to think about. Uh, and I, I know I know I'm hearing this. I'm hearing the, a lot of a lot of laptops shut off when I said things to think about. But I think you're going to enjoy this. Um, one of the things that that, that 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 you need to understand is is mixing at the level of the people whose mixes you respect. It's not one thing. It's not one style. It's not analog or digital. It's not the function of a box. It's a function of, of thousands of little small decisions that the engineer makes. And so if you listen to, to several of the people that we've interviewed, you, you get a feel for what some of those thousands of decisions are. And, and it's the combination of all of those decisions that determines the difference between quality of, of the various mixes. Um, um, over time, I've known a lot of great mixers, and, and they'll change gear completely and still sound exactly the same. So the gear isn't as important as you might think it is. It's important, don't get me wrong. But um, uh, I've seen mixes done with just very, 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 very little stuff, and they sound incredible. I've seen guys with tons of gear. It's, it's, it's your taste. It's a function of your taste. and so. Make your goal in life to, to acquire taste. Secondly, compression. Um, right now we're in a period where, where we like our mixes loud and we, we depend on our mastering guys like Dave Kutch to do that for us. But if you listen to Dave, if you listen to Michael Brower's show, Jack Joseph's show, Eric Valentine's show, some, uh, uh, Joe Barisi, some of the guys that are that are known for compression, they don't try to get all the compression with one big, like, s s swat of the of the plug-in or the or the or the piece of gear. They do it in stages. They'll 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 work on a, a like let's say a vocal. They might compress that vocal. Like like Brower tends to use parallel compression, so he'll he'll return the compressor. He'll send a piece of that lead vocal to the compressor. 
he'll return that to another fader and he'll mix that in. There's different techniques, but compression a little bit at a time. And then you, and then you saw Dave Kutch talk about how he, 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 he used a little bit of plug-in, a little bit of analog, a little bit of different things at a time. So that's, that's, that's one thing. Do, do, while you're learning, do home mastering. Read, 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 read as much as you can on mastering. Pro Sound Web has an entire forum on mastering. Learn some of the techniques of the mastering guys and apply those on your stereo bus. And so you can do a little bit. Don't do too much. Just do a little bit as you're starting out. Focus on the whole when you're mixing. Don't focus on the individual tracks. Focus on the whole. When I first started mixing, I sucked. And, I, and I've got friends that will verify that. Um, I was talking to Ed C. yesterday. And Ed, Ed was there right from the beginning and heard me when I sucked. But we were discussing the fact that, that I knew I couldn't compete with the big boys, Herb. So uh, I started late. I, I, was, I was in my 30s when I started mixing. I started engineering, and I knew that I couldn't be as good as quickly as I wanted to and compete with the greats, mm -hmm. but I had a unique set of tastes, so I'd made the conscious decision to use my taste as opposed to my engineering, mm -hmm. and lo and behold, I got popular in Atlanta mm -hmm. and, and worked a lot, and I never liked a single mix I did, but I liked, I liked the mixes because they were about the songs, you know. Luckily, I was working with a lot of, a lot of punk rock acts at that time. I was working with... A, uh, REM type acts. Um, uh, never worked with them, but I, I worked with acts like that. So I, I, I made it about taste instead of skill. And and you can you can you can you can do pretty good if you start there. And then another another thing that's important is uh, parallel to what we're we're talking about. Celebrate your uniqueness, like. I used to get scared because I didn't sound like everybody else, and I automatically assumed I didn't sound like them. With, meant that I sucked. It's a bad thing. It, right. it, it's yeah. not a bad thing. Right. Um, when I when I when I worked in Atlanta for about seven or eight years, then I moved out to L.A., and I was still kind of nervous about my uniqueness. But it turns out, it was a good thing. Her, Herb met me when I'd only been here a couple of weeks, and and um, he he encouraged that in me. Um, another thing that I think helps is the combination of your room acoustics and your monitors. It's hard to know what to do if you're not hearing what's correct. Um, my good friend Phil Grice in Canada, uh, incredible producer, writer, and uh, a mix we just finished yesterday mm -hmm. uh, for, for Phil, talked to me about the, the, the ARC. There's a number of different products that will help you tune your room. Phil told me that it, he really likes what that does. So there's, there's some affordable processes. We, we, we did the Bob Hodes show. A friend of mine from, from France, Tom Jean Jean, I think I said his name right. Uh, we're going to do an ITL with him. He's, he's an incredible room tuner. And so make sure that, that you, you've got the best acoustic control you can afford, the best monitors you can afford. Um, mixing is like music itself. When you hear a song that you like, you don't evaluate every little element of the song. Either you like it or you don't. It makes you feel something or it doesn't. So be musical. Feel something from your mix. Pull the room. If everybody tells you, oh, it's good, it's good, it's good, that just means you're mediocre. You want three people to tell you it sucks horrendously. You want three people to go, it's good, it's good. But you want four people to go, man, how much do I have to pay to get this? This is incredible. Don't settle for mediocrity. When everybody kind of likes it, that's, that's mediocrity. That's not, that's not you doing good. Um, preach, Dave. Preach. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I know some of these things, and most of these things aren't technical things, but it's, 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 it's a lot of small things. It's, it's, it's being confident without being arrogant. It's growing. It's, 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 it's studying. If you're, if you're creating the demo and the rough mix, it's like just trust yourself, man. Uniqueness gets rewarded. Uh, lukewarm, bland, sameness just gets spit out. So that, that's, that's, that's the way I want you to kind of think. And um, I want you to spend a lot of time on all the various uh, music outlets, Spotify, Pandora, uh, Centernet, uh, um, um, what's the place out of Denver, the dance place, Beat, uh, Beatport. Beatport. Um, and uh, 
I, I, it kind of upsets me when I hear engineers say, oh, I never listen to the radio. I mean, that's okay. But I personally, I love listening to the radio. I love devouring music. I love listening to music. Uh, and sitting across the table for me is an incredible example of how taste trumps ability. Drew is at a, at a learning stage. <laughs> Drew is at a learning stage in terms of, of, of his progression, but he's making incredible leaps and bounds because he's got taste. Now, now Drew's very skilled too. He's got gifts in that area, but if it, I, I think it's a fair thing to, to ask you, Drew, um, you you still are uncomfortable about a lot of the mixes you do, but your confidence in your in your yeah. taste is there. You know what a good snare sound is. Sometimes you struggle to get it. You know what a good vocal sound is. So, taste trumps everything, and um, just just think about some of the things I've said. Discuss it on the on the Facebook pages and add to what I've said. This isn't a complete list, but if you take anything away from what I'm saying, taste, develop taste. Don't focus on the, on the technical part. Focus on the energy and the emotion. Be confident with your uniqueness. And remember, it's not one little thing. It's not one box, one plug-in. It's, 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 it's numbers and numbers and numbers of very tiny decisions. Um, I'm constantly amazed, and this is the last thing I'm going to say, and we're going to move on, Will. I'm constantly amazed at when somebody says, the mix is horrible, Dave, I, I just don't like it. And I'll, I'll, I'll do one little DB move, and suddenly I'm a genius. They love the mix. It's the little things, guys. Uh, we just had an experience like that this week. Uh, Drew and I did. It's the, it's the little things. So um, keep the passion going. Every guest we've ever had, you can tell. They've been doing this for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years in some cases, and their passion is still as is, 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 is amazing as is, is anything I've ever seen. And that, that, that's one of the things I've taken away from a lot of these shows. So anyway, uh, I appreciate you listening to that. And I, I really feel from my heart I've given you some really good information. So please, 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 for me, just think about it. Even if you disagree, just think about it. Apply some of this information. And um, back to you, Dave. Oh, thanks. Um, <laughs> good. Well done. Sorry. No, well that done. Good. That was excellent. Uh, look, uh, two, two quick compliments, which we don't do, and we don't do a lot of self-aggrandizement, but um, you do that really well. You know, I'm oh, just, we've been friends for a long time. Thanks. It's It's rare in a cutthroat business mm -hmm. to find somebody that is as generous as you are about this stuff. And sometimes, thanks. even though, you know, I've pretty big role in the show, mm -hmm. I sit back and go, oh, yeah, that's why this works, because <laughs> you're so good. That's compliment number one. Well, compliment number you. two, I'm sorry. No, no, thank you. Compliment number two. I'm uncomfortable with compliments. Keep going. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> is, is we want to, uh, because I was remiss at the top of the show, to introduce our CJ, not the DJ, the incredible Drew Adams. Um, Ooh, and 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 point. what and the comp oh, <laughs> hit the point, Drew. Nice point, the Drew. Lip. Nice. Did you practice the lip? Let's hit it again. Let's see that one more time. Man do it one more right time. There. Hit it. I'm gonna do it again. Yeah. Come on. Uh, okay. 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 No okay. lip. No we're, lip. We're gonna, that one lacked emotion, Drew. But we're gonna get that back into the frame of the shot. Magic. Um, <laughs> you can't repeat magic. So, Add that to the Greg List quote file. Got that. So as we as we go into corner office uh, and get ready to answer a bunch of your questions, well, the one thing that that I do want to mention is just how good Drew is as a mix engineer. Drew is a Drew's quiet incredible. force yeah. on his way. I've had a chance to hear and 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 it's interesting for me as the business side. It's not just hearing his mixes, which is part mm -hmm. of it. It's also been to see how he manages clients oh, and problems and issues. Yeah, and stuff. He was born with that. I don't think you can teach that, but he's, he definitely is good. So kudos to you, brother. Right. Yeah, man. So you yeah, done nothing without you. Listen, it's a it's a family. So you got some questions for us? Let's. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Let's. Uh, let's we got plenty. Let's tee up corner office. And, Let me get a uh, graphic. There you go. There it is. So, fire away, brother. All right, we're gonna start off with Herb. Oh. Yay! Question to her oh, from I... Ophir Shamir. Ophir Shamir. I like that. It's like an MC name. That's a cool name. Can you please give advice to producers, engineers about gaining more work through third parties such as managers, rosters, labels, etc.? And at which point should a producer engineer seek such an option? Thank you all. For... Oh, thank you all. Uh, good question. It's a good question. It's a, a little complicated. Um, and, and it, first of all, everything is an opinion. So you're going to you, experts will give you different things. This this is what I would 
say to you, it's important that there's something to manage or produce. And it isn't automatic that a manager can just get you work or a producer is just going to assign work to you till you do a couple of things. Raise the bar of your work, make sure you're getting objective opinions, try to get involved with somebody so that work can be utilized in a commercial way so you can give somebody a reference. And that might be assisting somebody, that might be stepping into a problem. It's going to mean doing a lot of work for free, then you end up on somebody's radar, then somebody will take a shot on you. The business has changed dramatically, so you have to really understand that that is a timing thing. You don't want to do it prematurely, because if you try to do it prematurely, it's just your work that's going to be hurt and judged unfairly. So it's a little bit of a feel thing. It's a little bit of a networking thing. It's a little bit of an understanding thing. So excellent, 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 excellent answer. Dave yes. from City. City. Mike City? Uh, just S-I-D-I-E. Oh, oh, no. Uh, anywho, how do you mix for headphones? Sometimes my mixes don't sound as great on headphones or earphones. Well, that's a deep question because that's not cool. I, <laughs> I'm guessing that probably 40% of all the music we create is listened to on headphones or earbuds. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to sound good on headphones. But I would say mix, uh, uh, it could be that, that your room your room acoustics are not quite right. It could be that um, your monitoring is not quite right. Uh, it could be that that um, you're using crappy headphones, uh, which I which I do on intentionally. Um, it, it, the 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 techniques for mixing on headphones are really not different than listening to speakers, except you just have to be constantly reminding yourself that headphones are, are just shoving stuff straight down your ear canal so you're going to hear the mix components a little more than you would through speakers and um, a lot of it's just experience. Uh, my, my, my first, uh, rather than going into, into a lot of lengthy little things, which, which, which uh, the, what I would say is get it to sound great on your, on your speakers, listen to it in your car, listen to it at your friend's house, then come back and listen to it on the headphones. Uh, I use headphones quite a bit, but I, one of my main things I like headphones for is to eliminate the reflections in the room, the imperfections of my room. Sometimes when I'm in the room, I, I, I'll get my, I'll get my uh, delays and stuff a little, a little different than they should be, and then I'll put my headphones on and I, suddenly I hear everything. Uh, but that's not necessarily good. You gotta, you gotta, headphones are, are they're, they're, they're tough because you, you, you can't trust what you're always hearing. Always rely on your speakers first and then rely on your headphones for additional things. Cool, yeah. um, from Anthony Max, uh, he's curious about, he says, what written notes do you make when mixing? Do you have a system so you know what your first impressions are, where you are, what you've done, etc.? Absolutely. Anybody that's ever worked with me knows that uh, even when they're not around, and like if, I, if, if, if Herb or, or, or sends me a, a rough mix from the client, or if I get a rough mix, or if I'm with the client when, <clears throat> when they're playing me some songs just for fun, I always take notes because that first impression, I think most of the people that I know that do this for a living, they, they rely on first impressions. So the first impression is really important. Don't just take notes about things you want to change. Uh, take notes about things that are great so you'll know not to change them. That was something I, I had to learn because uh, nowadays the producer and the engineer, if the producer is the engineer or not, they spend a lot of time on these rough mixes. So don't look at them as something negative. Look at them as a road map. Look at them as a guideline for providing information like, you, like do I add reverb to the snare? Check the rough. Do I add a lot of delay throws, check the rough. So the roughs are incredibly important. The other thing too that I noticed that we've instituted in our business is when we are going to work with a client, we always do a creative call. I think that's great. Where that, mm -hmm. what I've noticed is in that discussion with you, there's mm -hmm. a comfort level that have, it's, it's almost verbal note taking mm -hmm. in some ways. It's a, a comfort level happens. Yeah. You get a sense of an expectation of what they're looking yeah. for. They get a sense of expectation back from you in terms of timing and yeah. procedure stuff, and Absolutely. it makes everything kind of go Absolutely. go better. I so. was just talking with Aton, uh, Avery's manager, the mix we're doing for yeah. Chris Anacute, and uh, 
uh, we were talking about meeting the artist. I think that's that's even yeah. more important to get a vibe for the artist because y you want your mix to be tailored. You don't you don't want to be the target of mixers. You want you don't want mixers that you give people to just come off the shelf. You want highly tailored, thought out, measured, mm -hmm. and you measure people's emotions and you get all that into a tailor made one off mix. Mm -hmm. Good point. Um, all right, I'm going to try and say it's if I'm messing up. Gislin Brindamore. Hmm, that's pretty good. Well right. done, Drew. That's I'm, somebody from Palm Beach. I'm, <laughs> <public school. laughs> uh, I'm set up in Montreal, Canada. Ooh, yay, hey, Phil Grice. <laughs> Things are going quite well for me as a mixer. Can one expect to take the next step in the career staying in Montreal, or do I need to jump to the U.S.? Herb. Uh, I can fix that. Jump. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Batter's box. I get. Yeah, can I can I expand on? Sure. I, I know you wanted Herb to answer this, my friend, but um, I think it's an advantage to learn in an outside of a major market because for me, like I told you, I was not good for a long time, and nobody knew or cared because I was in a smaller market at the time. And then when I came out here, I hit the ground running. I can't remember how many number one records I had that first year, but it was quite a few, and. I made a big splash, uh, be, not necessarily because I was good, but because I was ready. And the guys, uh, sometimes I worry about guys like Drew, uh, Ariel, Jason, Dylan, all my, all my, all my guys. Starting here under the microscope can be just e extra added pressure. It's very expensive to start out here. So, in, in in places like I started in Atlanta, it was easy to be broke. I had years where I only made fifteen hundred dollars a whole year and still managed to save a couple of dollars. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I would say stay there until you know you're ready and then get the hell out. I've just, you know what, I feel like singing Oh Canada. Oh, but, <laughs> oh Canada. Oh. Anyways, let, let me just, let, let me. <laughs> See, I have to show you my scholarship too for singing. Uh, let, let me, I get asked that a ton of times mm -hmm. on Facebook about getting to the U.S. So l let me add something else I to your point. Hear what you said. Um, I find that people look too narrow, too narrowly at the, at the prospect that the notion of just mixing hit records causes people to make their focus too small. So oh, that's a great point. When you, so if you're learning, you've got ample opportunities in your market if you expand the way you look at it. There are so many areas where you're mixing ability could apply. Is that ADR? Is it Foley? Is it gaming? Is it live? Is it? So that's one side. Then there's different kinds of relationships where you are. So yes, you can try to get with the hot producer, but it might be with the hot writer. It might be letting agencies in your town know about you. It might be, it might be studios. It might be something else, but it might be managers. It might be, you just don't know. It might be the live troupe in town that's doing something. The internet, as Tom Friedman said, has flattened out the world a lot. And so you, you can work this in different ways to try to grow your craft. And I've seen people, and I've advised people, and some of them have taken that advice, where they became stars where they were, and here they would get their ass kicked for years, potentially, and, and struggle. There's a point in time where, the, and, and before coming here or to one of the major markets, was the way to do it. But there, there were 50 operative studios and they all needed 20 interns and mm -hmm. that model has changed. So you want to come here at the right time with the right chops, with the right relationships. I just thought of a really silly metaphor. Can I share it with Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Just think, you're, think of being a sailor and you want to sail in the America's Cup, but you live in Kansas. Uh, there's not a lot of ocean in Kansas, but you can get basic skills on a lake nearby and then when you get those skills you come out to uh, one of the places where America's Cup is held, uh, like Australia or Newport or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the place in New England they have it? Uh, it's Newport. It is. Mm -hmm. and, and, then, and then when you're ready, you can come out in there. But, it, but to me, at some point, you, depending on what part of the profession you want to get in, like, like if you want to be Alan Meyerson, for example, you know, a, a top movie mix guy, you're probably going to have to leave Canada. But timing is everything. What was his name? Oh, no, 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 be um, it's yeah, it's on camera. Uh, all right, this is a question. I, I'm curious about it. It's I guess for both you guys, from Elias Tejeda. 
a frequent uh, guy in our chat room. Are there any temp agencies for freelance mixing and mastering engineers? Any type of union, I guess, type of thing. Not that I know of. Uh -huh. No, there's been attempts. Uh, <coughs> my close friend Tony Maserati had a little cooperative. Remember back when you were uh -huh. with Brian McKnight, he uh -huh. was trying to do something in New York. Um, um, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Like a clearinghouse, perhaps, or um, a monster for uh, like a website that hire, you know, like a website for hiring people for but for mixers. I don't think so. There, there, there are places that have tried to do this and sort of coalesce yeah. names and so so forth. Uh, again, the internet has affected that dramatically, so you want to be careful about. Yeah. You want to. Some may be good, some may be not. Everything requires a lot of research. Yeah, I, I personally like, like. I, I'm a big believer in find at some point. Her, her will probably expand on this a little as the show goes by, but I'm a firm believer that. Mixer should mix and manager should manage and Herb uh, taught me that there's an art to managing but there's an art to being managed. Find a manager you trust and then trust him and then just you mix, manager manages and then and that's the closest thing to, 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 to that process you'll find and don't expect your manager to get your work, expect your manager to close the deals, to, to, to guide you in terms of where to be, make, help you. I don't make any decisions without talking to my managers, in particular Herb. Uh, over the years. Plus, my mixes suck, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, yeah, that's from, what Drew said, but I said they weren't that bad. One of them was okay. Uh, from Sidharth Doobie. Uh, Dave Pisato, what do you think is the better way to go? Intern at a studio or go to a school to learn? Please share your thoughts on this. Okay, I'm going to give you a quick answer. It depends on the individual. Some individuals benefit from going to a school because they need that structured. Uh, environment. Me personally, I did not go to a school. Um, the schools allow you direct access to internship at some of the bigger studios, but if, if you've got a Pro Tools rig and, and taste and talent, I, you can bypass that. It might take you a little longer. It took me a little longer, but that was okay for me. I think they both have their use, and um, one day we'll talk to some people about how to get the most out of a school because just going to the school doesn't make you successful. You have to fight to get studio time. You have, there's a lot of things that can make you more successful going to a school. It's a lot like just in the regular world. I've got friends that right out of high school worked at McDonald's. I spent eight years in college and playing in bands and so probably if you if you average 30 years they probably made the same amount of money I did because they started making money sooner. So. It, 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 it depends on you, it depends on your personality, and it depends on your goals. Um, it depends also if those friends are still at McDonald's. And it depends on what school you choose. Yeah. Uh, if you go to a school like... You're in, like the manager's in. Um, I mean, it's interesting because it's a batter's box kind of question. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, I'll, oh, I'll deal with... No, no, it's fine, but I'll, I'll just deal with it from my perspective if, if that comes okay. up in the batter's box. Okay. okay. Keep but also, on. too, the school you pick is important. AI is a great school, um, full sale. Berkeley, uh, about LA, the RW, doing, huh? Talking about the thing we're doing tonight. Can't. Uh, okay, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> you didn't hear that, people. All right, you went on. to LA. LA Recording School. LA Recording School, that's a good school, too. Cool, cool. Okay, uh, Dave, as far as the starting a mix. SAE is a good school, too. Yeah. Uh, Stanislav Vrabel, can you please go more, more into details on how to recognize focal points when starting a mix? Well, we did an ITL on that, so. Um, I have a li limited amount of time to answer questions. I don't want to be rude, but uh, if, if you've seen that ITL, just send me a, a Facebook and I'll, I'll, I'll expand on that. Next question. Oh, okay. Uh, one second. Okay. For Herb, from yes. Richie Palooza. Richie. How do you approach things like goal setting when dealing with a client? Um, that's a great question. Um, it's a combination of First of all, understanding their perspective and seeing what their goals are. Um, a lot of it is dependent on the relationship, how much they trust you, how much leeway you have. Some clients, you have very little leeway, some you have a lot. Um, in our particular relationship, it's pretty wide open. Um, Dave trusts kind of my thought process. I trust his. He knows nothing's going to happen without him knowing about it. We talk about things. We disagree. We both have kind of a knack for 
capitulating to the better idea, and, we, and it doesn't feel Very like it good. doesn't feel like we're losing to somebody. Um, and you have to be realistic. Um, the the worst thing is to do is to set expectations, and you can't hit them. Um, uh, it's a journey. It's going to have ups and downs. So um, I think that's the the measured way. And I would I would think most managers would give you some combination of that answer. Dave, tech question. What are the sweet spots or sweet spot EQing starting points on female pop vocals for boosting and cutting generally so the vocal sits on top of the mix but isn't too essy? Who's that from? That is from John Saris. Uh, John, um, if, if I get vocals that say Coot Cut or Andrew Cut or something like that, um, I'm just tweaking. If I get vocals sometimes that were um, cut in less than, than ideal situations with less than skilled people, it's tough. But uh, I'll give you some guidelines. These are not go-tos, they're guidelines. I like a vocal that has a little bit of sibilance, not too much. I like, I like the S's to be S's on a female vocal. I like, <clears throat> I like to push the 4 and 5K area as much as I can without it being piercing. Um, when Jason and I were working a lot together, he, he always complained I put too much 4K in my vocals, but I kind of like it. And then, and then as we come down the frequency spectrum, the 1K to 2K area is a bit trendy right now to have a little extra. So um, a, a mixing a vocal three years ago, I'd put a little less 1K or leave a little less in, whichever, whichever you're starting with, than now. Uh, I, I use a little more 1K, and then as you get below that, I call that the Tony Braxton range, that low kind of mm -hmm. Tony Braxton, 600, 800. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Dexter Simmons mixed a Tony Braxton song, and I, I, I thought it was the best she's ever sounded. And I said, what'd you do? And he said, man, I just worked the 600 real hard. Mm -hmm. So watch that area. Uh, sometimes a, a real young singer, you can take away a little bit of youthfulness if you add too much of that. Um, I did a mix recently, and, and I had a little bit too much 300, and, and that's, that's the mud. So you got to be careful. You pull the mud out and, 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 and do all of these things in the mix. Don't do them soloed. Do the heavy lifting first, and then put it in the, in the mix and listen and, 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 and attack those areas. Hope that gets you started. Yeah. From uh, Conway, I or Conway Land, sorry. Question for Herb. As an engineer, I'm sorry, engineer, producer, what are the most important aspects of our business to focus on, networking or internet presence? Oh, I guess question. one of the two. Um, <laughs> both. There, is there a difference? Yeah, I, I, I would say both and a lot more. That the answer to that question is those are two components of probably eight or ten. Um, you need to know something about the business side. You need to know how to get paid. You need to know how your money should be managed. You need to know... How you, where you want to target, you need to understand format stuff. It's no longer a time where you could be what I call sort of a blind specialist. I think when we were coming up in the business, if you just did this and stayed over here and got good at it, somebody would hire you just to do that. And there's a component still of that that's true in the business. But to be unaware today is to be vulnerable. Don't you think like, like, like most of the people we run into today, especially the hip-hop community, they're very savvy on publishing, they're very savvy on... They have to be. They're, um, they're, they're a lot more educated than they, than, uh, not they being right. artists, not, not just one particular community, but artists are more, more savvy now than ever. Well, I, I think it's been a canard that, I don't, we won't bore you with this, but that artists have been these vulnerable things, have been taken advantage of. That, that ended 25, 30 years ago. The well, reality sure is, seems that way. yeah, and, and the fact of the matter is, is partially hip-hop, partially the business, partially the internet, has made everybody more entrepreneurial. You can't be a successful entrepreneurial and be blind. You can't, mm. you can't be a successful entrepreneur. The, the hip-hop community blind. is just inspirational in their entrepreneurship. We, and, you, you talk about that a lot. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I have other quibbles, but, but the reality of it is, and so it's affected everybody in in what in, in fact I look at not even in the music space in the content space everybody needs to understand their entrepreneurial side so that whatever they do they're aware of things it's going to make you better and it's going to inform your craft see that's the part that people used to disconnect I don't need to know about business as long as I know creative no your creative will get better if your business is sharper because you'll know how to target it more I agree oh, deal. Uh, we got time for one more we moving on 
one more, and then we'll right. do our we'll warm day's arm up. All right, uh, last question from Richie Palooza again, because I like this question. So, when starting, or for her, yeah. when starting with a new client, what questions do you ask? What info do you need to get started? Um, when starting with a new client, what I mostly do is listen. Does and what do you, mean, what do you does, ask does, as far as? Does he mean as? starting with, with someone that wants to hire me or starting with someone like me? I don't know. So let's answer it both ways. Okay. Uh, if it's me representing them, I mostly listen and see if there's a match and so on and so forth. If it's somebody who's hiring Dave, um, I try to get a sense of what they want to get done, how they want to get it done, whether we can have some flexibility in terms of our pricing or not, um, where it fits our calendar and schedule, whether Dave likes the music or not, there's a lot of sort of filling in that picture um, because of his reputation and because of their expectations, the client's expectations. It's important that it matches, and so I try to set it up so it matches, which once we've agreed to do the business, then I put them together personally, which I don't get involved in, then they have their own connection. But all that preset stuff makes the relationship go better, which allows Dave to mix freely, the client to be creative, and everything else to be out of the way. For you. Sure. One thing I one thing I've known about you because I've known you so many years, mm -hmm. you 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 don't just take anything that comes along mm -hmm. with a few million dollars and and manage them. Mm -hmm. What uh, is, is their personality uh, like? You, personalities are important to you, right? The the fit with yeah. a, with a client. Precisely. Precisely. Do, you, do you evaluate it in terms of? They won't allow me to to do what I do best, or uh, That's some of it. Some of it's some of it's chemical. Some of it is, a lot of it is fit. Because um, I had nothing. I mean, I was living in my car and you were managing me. I, well, I don't, I don't, I, but yet I've seen you turn down, I won't name names and embarrass you, but I've seen you turn, turn down some incredibly, like, some of the 20 most popular artists ever. Well, it, it's mostly, and just like you've turned down, and we've turned down big clients who want you to mix. Um, mm -hmm. There's no exact science to it, but if you're going to get together with somebody for the wrong reasons, it's going to end up badly at some point in time and you gain experience and you can forecast that as you get when you're younger you sometimes don't know that and those can have really deleterious effects on your career on the client's career and why do you want that on your shoulder I got involved with somebody it got screwed up for whatever reason and honestly nine times out of ten nine times out of ten when an artist career gets screwed up it's usually somebody else's fault or at least that's the way it's portrayed that's not always the truth it's a lot of times not the truth, but the conventional wisdom is who screwed up their career? I'll, I'll take full responsibility for going a little longer on the show, but this is a good question. Okay. What is it that constitutes and what is a, something you can look for to pick out a bad manager? Ooh, Ooh good question. Um, because management is one of the few things like, like you have a child, you, you raise a child, you send it to high school, the child starts singing, suddenly you're managing it. It's like, it's, it's, it's like at least my profession kind of discourages just any idiot to try it. But the management profession seems to encourage several idiots to try it. Does that irritate you? And secondly, what is it that they possess that you don't? Uh, well, take, take me out of the equation well, for I a minute. I said it backwards. What is it that you possess that they don't? Um, well, and again, so we can get the batter's box, but uh, take me out of it, or we can cue the batter's box, and we'll just roll into it from here. So, Will, why don't you cue the batter's box, and we'll answer that question That's as we're queuing it to it. He just take control of the batter's he box. He just slid. It's my job. It's okay. my job, brother. Okay. So, so I'm, I had two sets of questions. Let me answer. I have the easy ones and the so hard you, ones. Do you want me to answer the last question? Huh? Do you want me to answer the last question you asked? No, the hard ones. These are the easy ones right here. Yeah, These right. are the hard ones. Go ahead. Are you ready? You just robbed them of some really vital information. But go ahead. Okay. When should you get a manager? Never. No. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I, we sort of answered it before. A little bit is. Time. A little bit. Thank you. Next. No. The, 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 <laughs> I understand. The, like after a year. When you. Uh, there is no time. When there's to something it. to manage, I think is what you when, said. When there's something to manage, when you can make that evaluation, when it, when it becomes. When your business becomes overwhelming. Uh, okay, so you and Drew are setting something up, silly. Nah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to get his phone from him. Ne next question. Um, <laughs> label or independent? Based on what? 
Dumb question. It is one again. <laughs> <laughs> should a person go, go, go independent? Back to label. Should oh. an artist, uh, a young artist, should they go independent or for should an, they go to a label? For an artist, it mm -hmm. depends on their situation. Some You can sometimes be a star at an independent and get lost at a label, and sometimes a label can give you... What's the best say. entry for... What's the best way to get into the music industry? What's a good proven... Um, choice in terms of making an entry into the music business. No set way. Get on where you can get on. Learn where you can. 360 deal. Yes or no? Depends. People. <laughs> well, <it's not> <laughs> I just <laughs> spit on you. Sorry. Yeah, you did. You did. <laughs> but you know what? I just let, spit let, on him. Let, I like let, let, let me answer that <laughs> okay. because all, all, all kidding aside, here's what people don't understand about 360 deals. 360 deals are a set of conditions that you negotiate with somebody. This knee-jerk reaction that is horrible, it has to do with not looking at it. So I can give you an example, one specific, a really big hip-hop artist whose name I won't mention, who I was involved in their negotiation. They, we literally picked what percentage of things a label could involve themselves, and the label got one quarter of proceeds off of one T-shirt. They got proceeds from three dates and something else based on them investing in those things. So the notion, that's why, these, that's why these answers aren't that quick. You've got to do your research, it's serious business. And I'm not saying it's pro that, I'm saying you can control that depending on who represents you and who you hire to do it. Thank you. Okay, um, I answered this, but I really want to hear your take on it. School or no school? Um, schools are a question of researching the school, looking at different things in terms of depth of your um, degree, depth of where they take you outside of the specific recording thing, placement services, and what a lot of people don't know is some schools are run really well, some schools from a regulatory standpoint are not. Networking. Uh, an important topic, we are actually speaking on that later tonight right. at a local school in LA, which won't matter for those people on YouTube can't. because I'm not mentioning the school because we oh. critically can't. Um, but nonetheless, and by the time this runs on YouTube, they won't see it, but for our chat room, we're appearing at a school on Sunset, Los Angeles Film and Recording School. Thank you. Evaluations. Evaluations in terms of what you and I get. Can you evaluate my music? Can you evaluate my mix? Mm -hmm. um, it, my personal opinion is uh, don't play your mixes for your friends. Um, they're going to love you and give you back positive stuff. Try to go into camps that are critical. Um, this is very old school because they don't exist anymore, but I used to take my mixes, which were sometimes Dave's mixes, and go to shops and stores like Best Buy and Circuit City and actually act like I was testing stereo. Oh, that's cool. And I would just, on Saturday afternoon, play them loud and see if anybody stopped by and said, what is that? I like that, and so on and so forth. And I got that opinion. Lawyers. Oh. Lawyers. What about them? Attorneys. What about them? Lawyers. Uh, when to get one, when not to get one. Usefulness. Should, like a lot of people like lawyers to manage them. Um, same question as um, managers in when there is business. Um, lawyers, to me, sometimes are very valuable. Um, you have to know when to pick them. You have to certainly get references and make sure you get a good one. Um, they sometimes can be one-stop information to and access to lots of different things. They usually sit right at the crux of deal flow. And so if you want, if you have business where there's deal flow and you try to do it without attorneys, you can't. You can't be foolish about it. Don't go for the buddy. Do your research. Okay, uh, two more questions. Sure. What's the best way to get noticed? It's a broad uh, question. My, my personal opinion is to get a haircut like Dave's. Like me. <laughs> Precisely. Uh, okay, final uh, question. Yes. Uh, um, final question. Big one. Polo shirts or dress shirts? <laughs> yeah, is there? Oh, I'll is, accept this oh, answer. Is there uh, even or, a reason? Or the B part, Kobe or LeBron? You can take your choice. Oh, God. I'm gonna go shirt to avoid, <laughs> to avoid that to avoid that discussion. You need to ask me the other question in a different year. Um, Kobe. Always be appropriate. Kobe. A dress shirt. What that series? Hold on, hold on, hold on. But Poe to the low. <laughs> 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 Got to go. Oh, uh, low. I was stepped on that. That's a good one. Okay, <laughs> that's our batter's box. Back yes. to you, Will. <laughs> so. Uh -huh. Oh, by the way, yes. that message that, that I got was from Dylan saying, I'm just trying to mess up your show. So you 
<laughs> well done, Dylan. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, cool. So, anyways, uh, okay. we're wrapping up Batter's Box, correct? Yes. All right, so thank you. Good job, that. man. Thank uh, you. For what do you think, Drew? <laughs> Fantastic. I'd oh, say that. that, that very we're, we're just awesome. An all in house show. Now that we pat <laughs> ourselves on the back, our, our audience can now get back to good. normal stuff. Hey, remember our uh, beautiful Shadow Hills giveaway. Let's uh, take a look at that gear. There it is. It is a really oh. serious thing. Um, you can see how to enter at the bottom of the screen there. Very important. Hmm. Um, you've already heard some of our guests talk about how great this piece of gear is. And I'm sure if we keep talking about it and, for, and other guests are going to see it. You can look up on the screen and see how to walk through that, how to enter. They'll tell you all about it. Um, really fantastic. We thank Shadow Hills. Yeah, even if you don't, if, even if you don't win this, not everybody can win it. Check out their, their, their merchandise line. Their entire line is, if there is a black magic box, it, it could very well be something Shadow Hills makes. And then also, um, you know, go to the Vintage King website and check out, um, all their products, but particularly the Shadow Hills products. Cool. A um, couple other quick little things. We're going to obviously get your Vintage King t-shirts out. You see our CJ, he's wearing one. He's styling one today. Uh, so I think uh, uh, we're going to select a few questions out of the uh, corner office to get you those t-shirts. Uh, other than that... I got one little thing. Yep. Uh, Anthony sent me a, um, an HD native card this week. I got to tell you, I'm impressed. It blows me away. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. What do you think, Drew? Yeah, it's good. It's incredible. Anthony from Abbott? Mm-hmm. And then the other, other piece, the other thing that you were talking about earlier before the show started as we wrap oh, up. Oh, I almost forgot. The, uh, the HEQ from Waves came out. Uh, yes. I, I helped work on that, and uh, I'm telling you, you guys need to check it out. It's not a walk up to it and turn a knob and use it. It's, it takes a little bit of reading which I did not do, so I'm speaking from experience, but I had the benefit of talking with Mike, who designed it, and I'm telling you, it, it, it's, uh, we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit more in the future, but it's really a great piece of gear. Time to go? No. Okay, <laughs> sit around. <laughs> I'm going to stay here all, all right, night. All right, cool. <laughs> hey, guys, uh, thanks for letting us be us. We had a good time today. I hope you learned something, um, and I, I really appreciate you guys watching, and um, we, we can't tailor the show to your taste unless we know what your tastes are, so please let us know. We can't incorporate everything, as you well know, and we can't answer everybody, but we do, we do try to read them all and make a serious effort to incorporate the things you want to know, and we really appreciate that. You know what? Quick, quick before we go, Will, quick shout out to Candace Kohler, who uh, has invited us over tonight to her, to her school to oh, talk about things. Okay, and and, and it, for our chat room folks, because by the time you see this on YouTube, we will have already done it. However, it is at the Los Angeles Film and Recording School. We're going to have some great information for you. Um, so we'll see you folks later on this evening, and thanks a lot. I keep it. <laughs>